Hi everyone. I wasn't sure if I should call this advice for leaving America or do's and don'ts for leaving America or leaving any country for that matter. Um, before the end of the video, I'm going to share with you a way to be able to survive, to live, to make a living when you're overseas in most countries. Now, if you're thinking about this, and I imagine you are if you saw the title and you clicked on this video, then you're probably thinking it's maybe it's impossible. How could I possibly live in another country? Um, uh, I don't know how I would make a living and the language and the culture and all the difficulties that come with it. And I just want to let you know, on the one hand, millions and millions of people have been, maybe billions of people have been doing this forever. People have always been migrating and moving. Three of my four grandparents came from other countries to the U.S., so, and many of our grandparents did that. And they came, some of them came on ships and in terrible situations, um, they didn't have all of the modern conveniences that we do nowadays and the connections and ways to communicate with your family easily. Back then they could only communicate by writing and letters and stuff. And they couldn't even think about going back and visiting. So I want to encourage you on the one hand that it's very doable. Uh, you can definitely do it, but there's, I feel like there's right ways and wrong ways. And so that's why I want to talk about the do's and the don'ts. Uh, so uh, I'm probably going to, this might turn into a series. It really depends on your feedback. Please let me know if you have questions, specific questions or general questions about uh, concerns that you have, things that you'd like me to talk about, because there's so many things that I've experienced in the 24 years since I left the United States um, that some of the things I've even started to take for granted um, and I real I forget how difficult they were, but um, uh, I do want to uh, start with some of the do's. So first of all, if you're planning on leaving the the country, the U.S., definitely you need to. I would have at least five thousand dollars for person just per person just to put something on it. Um, I've seen people leave with very little and they have to return very soon. See, that's that's the whole problem, is if you really want to leave and move and be able to live out of the U.S., then you don't want to basically just, just put yourself in such a terrible situation that you have to return to the U.S., and then you're in a worse situation than you are now. And some people say, oh, no, it couldn't get worse. I'm this, I'm that, I'm in debt, and I have this kind of problem and that kind of problem. Well, running away, I don't know if you think you're going to make your life better by running somewhere else. Uh, now, some people do that. I mean, that is part of the history of migration, too, that people go to other places looking for a better life. So, and there, I, I, I'm the first one to admit, nothing the, something that works for one person, like me in this case, d won't necessarily work for everyone else. But that's why you share your advice with other people and you can learn. Hopefully you'll learn from a lot of the mistakes that I've made and that I've seen around me. So that's, that's the idea, right? Learn from other people's mistakes. Learn from their successes too. But definitely, I would have at least $5,000. Now, why do I say five? Because you would think $5,000, wow, in the U.S., where is that even going to get you? But you're not, you, if you're leaving the U.S., hopefully, this is another do. Look for countries where the dollar is strong. Look for a place where the dollar is going to go far. Just for example, off the top of my head, I'm not saying necessarily that these are good places uh, as as far as socially uh, or stability-wise, but someplace like Ecuador or a lot of the middle um, uh, Central American countries are, the economies are really low there. I don't recommend going to many of them. You know, I would never tell you, go to Ecuador, uh, go to El Salvador. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Although I'm sure there's somebody watching this or somebody's going to watch it that lives in El Salvador, lives in the good section and says everything's just fine. But you know, there's, you also want to avoid problems, avoid dangerous places, dangerous countries if you can, and you can. So, um, you want to, you want to look for that ideal place. So it takes a lot of research, um, and research that can take you a year, six months to a year 
Definitely, definitely. You don't want to rush. That's the biggest mistake. You don't want to rush uh, if you're planning on moving or leaving. You want to take your time, really uh, research it, make sure you're making a, a wise decision. Save as much money as you can. Save as much money as you can. Um, another point, don't uh, do, uh, go with like-minded people. Definitely, you want to find other people. If it's not, if you're a single person, then definitely you want to, if you can, find someone. Going on your own is tough. It's tough. I've I lived out of the country for most years or many of the years, half, um, on my own, and uh, there was good times, but there was it, it can get lonely, and you don't have that support group. You know, it's just better if you're with other people for so many reasons. For so many reasons. Um, learn as much when you finally do choose a country. Oh, I didn't tell you the other countries. Like, so I would say like maybe Ecuador or Bolivia, they have really depressed, uh, economies in South America. Uh, I don't know about Paraguay, Uruguay, a few of those countries have pretty depressed economies. So that means that the dollar is going to go far. You're going to go there and you think, wow, this is so cheap. I can have lunch for $2 or a dollar or whatever it is. Um, and that's another point before I forget, when you get to that place where your money finally goes so far, don't try, don't look for everything that you're used to having here. Just to give you some res ridiculous examples like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or whatever the thing is that you like, because down there it'll cost you an arm and a leg. Why? Because nobody, almost nobody else eats peanut butter in the rest of the world the way we do in the United States. So, uh, a jar of peanut butter is going to cost you like ten dollars um and so <laughs> i know i'm going to tell people that and they're going to load up their luggage with peanut butter because they love peanut butter um you know it's that's just one example but you go to the supermarket and you'll see a lot of the products from the u.s there but they're all way more expensive even though the economy of that country is very low i just said that not when it comes to import items like that what you need to do is look around at the locals, see what they eat and how they eat, and get as close to that as possible. And some of you, I know you're, you're motivated and you're really into, you know, learning about the other culture, the language, and doing it their way. Well, you know, see what they do. Find, strike a balance. Once in a while, you can splurge and get some, some special thing that you're used to having. But try to learn what the locals do. Don't always grab for the thing that has an English label on it. And that's why you need to learn the language. That's another do. You need to learn the language of the country you're going to. Now, one of the good things about going to Latin America is if you learn Spanish, like let's say you decided to go to Chile. And that was the first country that I went to, that I decided to go to. But I didn't stay there. I only stayed there for six months. I went to Peru after that and wound up staying there for seven years. Peru is the country I've lived in for the longest outside of the U.S. I've lived there twice for seven and there for four years. Uh, they speak Spanish there. They speak Spanish in all of the Latin American countries. Now they don't. They speak Portuguese in Brazil, and then they speak a few, uh, in Guyana. They speak English, and then the Suriname. They speak Dutch, and um, in Belize they speak English. Uh, so that's good. Billy's, there's an option. But um, so if you learn Spanish, you can jump around between a lot of the Spanish speaking countries. You, and I think Spanish is a good, well, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, biased because I know Spanish. I, you know, I studied Spanish in school, but I didn't start studying Spanish until high school. I didn't speak it growing up. I spoke English my whole life. Um, my last name, Esposito, is Italian, not uh, Spanish. Um, but yeah, yeah, learn some of the language. You, you don't have to be an expert, but take take a lesson. Uh, I recommend Pimsleur, P-I-M-S-L-E-U-R. It's an app you can get on your phone or on your computer or both, and you can listen and do uh, re listen and repeat lessons. That will give you at least a basis if you try to do that. That'll take you, it could take you like five to seven months to go through all the different lessons. It's really inexpensive. Um, unless you want to take lessons with me, but um, I'm not here to talk about that. Um, here, but just to give you that recommendation, um, it's like twenty dollars a month to, to have this app on your phone. Now, I use it for French, and because um, I'm always I, I like studying different languages. But you can uh, 
It will do listen and repeat. It will help you to have a good accent and it will help you to recognize, you know, when you hear the Spanish spoken. Make sure you, if you're going to Latin America, make sure you choose the Latin America option, not Iberian Spanish or Spanish from Spain. Um, or whatever, the, depends on the country you're going to, not necessarily going to Latin America. Who knows where you're going? Um, so, uh, yeah, make sure you learn some of the language. I would pay off all my debt before I left the U.S. I did this. Um, I had some debt, and I just prayed about it. I asked the Father to bless me, and he did, and I was able to pay off all my debt. I know some people, they just say, ah, I don't care. I'm just going to leave that. I'm never coming back. You don't know what you're going to return to. Um, so I would definitely take care of that as much as possible. Pay off your debt. You don't want to leave that hanging over you. Um, I also recommend, because this is going to connect to what I was talking about, how you can survive on your own and make a living, get a TEFL certificate, T-E-F-L, or a, a TESL certificate, T-O-S-E-L. That's teaching English as a foreign language or teaching... Uh, teaching English, teaching other, teaching English to other, uh, other people from other countries. I forget what it all stands for. Anyway, you can get these certificates. Um, you can get them overseas. You can get them in Mexico. You can also get them at community colleges and different language institutes around the U.S. Look for them. It's not cheap. Um, don't get the cheapest ones that you can get online for like $150 or $200. Don't get the cheap ones that you can get online. You're better off. I know you'll be tempted to do that. Um, at the bare minimum, I would do that if you're not willing to do what I'm going to say. Get something because some places will accept that. Uh, but it's better to go to like a community college or a language institute and get a TESOL or a TEFL certificate there. It takes a month. You just take classes every day for a month for a few hours. You're going to need some free time to do this. And they might have my nighttime programs if you're working. Um, and this will give you a really good foundation in how to teach English. They pass everybody. If you have the money, they're going to make it feel like really high pressure. And you do have to do some work. If you're a little bit older, get ready. Or however old you are, you're going to have to do some studying and some writing, some typing. And you're going to have to do a little bit of work. Uh, to to pass this and some studying to pass these tests and everything. But if you have the money, they pass everything. And it, I don't know how much it costs, but I know when I did it, it cost about $1,000. Um, and I was in Peru at the time. But they have these programs in the U.S. too. It probably be more expensive in the U.S. Shop around, look around. Uh, I would get the in-person certificate because then that opens up your options. If you did want to go to some of the higher-paying countries like I don't recommend this, but like China, Japan, South Korea, some of the Asian countries, or Saudi Arabia, you need the um, in-person certificate. They will not accept the online certificate. Uh, and you'll also need a bachelor's degree, either a BA or a BS. Um, any college degree, but not an associate's degree. So, uh, yeah, if you have those, that'll open that up. Now, in most other countries, like, I don't know about Africa, but in Latin America, they will accept, um, a lot of times, just the TEFL certificate. Um, some places will just accept my first job in Colombia, but that was a long time ago. That was back in 1990. Um, I got a job, and I didn't have the TEFL certificate. I, only, I studied Spanish in college, but they hired me to be an English teacher um, at a pretty prestigious uh, bilingual private school, um, but it had a BA, and that was that was their only requirement. So it's changed now a little bit, but in Latin America, it's a little bit la laxer, a little bit lighter. I would still get that, get the, te the TEFL certificate. If you need more information about that, ask me about it, but you can look it up and find it. Um, there's lots of different programs. And there might actually be programs online nowadays, especially because of COVID and everything. There might be programs online nowadays that are equivalent to the in-person program, you know, that are accepted, but you could do it online. But mm, I would do the ones where you have to do it in person. Um, usually you go to a small class with just a few other people, five to 10 people in, in all, and then they just go through it and they're patient and they know that you probably don't know how to teach English. But let me tell you something. If you speak English fluently, and I'm sure you do, you can be an English teacher in all of these countries. That's all they're looking for. If you're a native speaker, 
I'm not, you probably think, ah, I don't speak English that well, even though I am a native speaker. You speak English great. You speak it well enough and you can be a great teacher. That's all it takes. Just let them like train you a little bit, you know, so you get some confidence. And in most of these places, that's all they want. They just want a native speaker to be, even though they might have a more talented teacher, but because they don't speak English the way we do, they want they want you. It's a priority, especially in these, um, like the countries I mentioned, Saudi Arabia, Japan, China, South Korea. And they usually pay more too, but that's more of a, well, it's up to you. Yeah, that's another option. Um, okay, another thing is, ah, so even if you go with a group of people or some friends, expect to be left alone. Expect to be on your own. Mentally, be ready that I can do this on my own. And that's hard. That's the hard part. Um, but at least if you have people with you in the beginning, you have some, you know, you can support each other. And But some people will just give up. Say, I can't take this any longer. I have to go back. And you might feel like, no, this is working for me. I'm going to stay. And that's exactly what happened to me. Um, yeah, so well, I'm going to leave some other things because, you know, I want to get into the don'ts now. Um, don't be in a rush. Don't go alone. Don't cut off all ties and burn bridges. Don't expect people to speak English to you. There, you might think, all oh, the rest of the world speaks English. Not true. Not true. A lot of places, they won't speak. You're going to have to know some of their language to get by. Uh and and even like they might for example i lived in shanghai china for three and a half years they said oh this is the most international of all the chinese cities they have so many foreigners here well you they did not speak english now i don't go to a country expecting people to speak english to me i tried to speak chinese but my chinese was terrible it was such a hard language to learn and i'm pretty good with languages uh, but people didn't speak english all the time Granted, if you go into a hotel, yeah, they're going to speak English. But how how often can you go into a hotel? Most of the time you're going into like a convenience store or you have a question at the supermarket and nobody speaks English. Thankfully, there are so many apps on your phones nowadays that they can actually speak for you. And with and that was even before I was living there before AI was really starting to kick in with AI and stuff. Now you just speak into the phone. Hey, hello. Can you tell me is this shampoo or is it conditioner? That's exactly what happened when we were in China. You pick up the two bottles and they look exactly the same and they're just covered with Chinese writing. Not one word to indicate that that, that they're shampoo or conditioner. And um, so, and you're probably saying, well, why does he need shampoo? But anyway, um, so, you know, I'm like, what is it? So your phone, you can hold your phone up to it and the camera will scan the Chinese characters or Japanese or Korean and it will write on your phone they will just change into English. It's really cool. It looks like magic. All of a sudden, the Chinese letters, they just turn into English letters. And now the wording might be a little bit weird, but you'll be able to figure out, ah, this is shampoo, this is conditioner, or whatever the thing is. But don't expect people to all be able to speak to you in English. Um, don't expect anything to work the way it works at home in your country. Uh, yeah, from, and I'm talking about from physical things, like in your kitchen, appliances, don't expect them to work that way. The way you do things in stores, pharmacies, in public, and then with personal relationships, the culture is different. Expect everything to be a little bit different. Some things will be the same. Some things are kind of universal being polite, being nice, saying thank you, being, you know, the nicest person you could possibly be goes a long way. A smile is good. So, but um, don't expect things to work the way, you know, even speaking the language, even speaking Spanish. There were so many times when, and that I was surprised by the way things went. And then I lived, um, and I'm going to continue a little bit kind of in this series too to give you more information about um, specific countries. I want to talk about Peru. This is my favorite country. I lived there the, the longest, but I've lived in Chile. Just to give you a little, um, before I tell you how you can survive and live in these other countries uh, with the last point, um, I lived in Chile, then um, Peru, uh, Colombia, two times, 
Peru two times. Um, and these are, this doesn't include the countries I've visited. These are the countries I lived in and worked in for some period of time, at least six months, but some for years. Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, China, Ukraine. That's it. That's enough. <laughs> um, so uh, over a, a, that was uh, like 24 years ago that I first left the United States in 1999. Um, so yeah, uh, so l let me um, let me tell you. Uh, so once you get your, if you speak English fluently, then that really opens up doors for you that aren't open for a lot of other people. Because any country, you just look on the map, any country that doesn't speak English as their native language, like England, Ireland, Scotland, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, um, I guess it's debatable, Singapore maybe, there's some other place out there where the, most of the population speak, speaks English, but Many places don't. Even Hong Kong, where supposedly a lot of people knew English, they still need English teachers. Anyway, all of the other countries, you can be an English teacher. Yes, you. You don't have to be have a teaching certificate. You just have to get that TEFL certificate I was talking about. It just takes about a month. Now, if you're really lazy and you don't want to do that, or you just don't have the money, um, then you can get the online certificates. You can shop around. I wouldn't get the absolute cheapest one. I would get the one that sounds the most qualifying um so that might be around 200 300 dollars but definitely i recommend most strongly though the in-person program where you go to class for about one month it's four weeks you're going to go every day for like four or five hours a day or six hours a day have a teacher and they're going to teach you how to teach english it sounds terrible or it sounds boring to some of you who are like ah, i was terrible in english in school you can do it. Believe me, you can do it. I saw some people who had really bad native speakers who had pretty bad English and a hard, you know, they were like, what's a noun? What's a verb? What's an adjective? Believe me, you can do it. Try to try to brush up a little bit before you go, like warm up so that you don't feel so lost. Um, but you can go do that. Uh, when I went to Peru the first time, this was back in uh, 2000. November of the year 2000, so like 24 years ago, I went there. Um, I had no smartphone, no laptop, nothing. All I had was my brain. And I just, as soon as I got there, I, um, but you could go to internet cafes. I designed a little um, uh, poster saying, See, I have the advantage because I know some Spanish, but you could translate. You can use an online translator if you don't know Spanish. Uh, I did finally get a, um, a phone, or we had a phone in the house where we were renting. Um, uh, and I'm going to talk more about that in another, in the next video. Um, in another video when I talk about like actually living in another country. Uh, and I just made up posters saying, North American teaches English. They have so many English teachers, but they're all from their own country and they want native speakers and they don't have a lot of native speakers. You would think it's like full, but they don't have a lot of native speakers um, even now. So you're in demand. So I just put that up, I put up a folder, uh, a poster, and then I put my name and my number and then they called the house. Now that's the hard part because you know you're going to have to speak to them, but they're going to like it. If you're just speaking English, you're like, hello. And they're like, eh, necesito clases de inglés. I need class, English classes. And you're going to be like, what? Okay. You're not going to be able to communicate. But somehow if you can communicate your address or meet with them somehow. But anyway, you can get, that's what I did. And I was able to get students that way within like the first uh, month. Of living there I was already getting students everything was cash and I was making some money um making some money so I could make it making a living and then my savings weren't going out you know and you and the cost of living in those countries is pretty low but I want to talk about that too like how to get an apartment and all that other stuff in the next video so um yeah but you can do that you can definitely start getting work and um uh right when you get there you don't have to wait Definitely, I wouldn't wait. I would start looking for it. Now, if you can set something up here first 
and somehow work online. And that's another reason that living in Latin America is good because you're going to basically be in the same time zone as the U.S. You'll only be off by an hour or two at the most. Like if you lived in Brazil, it's like two hours earlier than the uh, one or two hours earlier than East Coast time in the U.S. But if you live in like most of the rest of uh, Latin America, you're in the same time zone as the East Coast or uh, the next central time. So uh, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Please give me some feedback. Let me know. Um, please subscribe if you can. Uh, let me know if you uh, what you think, what, what, you, what else you'd like to hear about, if you have any questions or doubts, because I'll address those definitely. Um, I'll read your comments. I'll try to respond to them, and I'll try to, uh, to give you the best information I can.